Hey guys, it's Keith Perkins with Train by Tex. And in today's video, we're going to use the PicoScope 6 automotive software to go over some basic trigger functions. Now there's a multitude of different advanced level triggers that are available on the software, but today we're going to stick to the basics. So let's start with what is a trigger. A trigger is the part of the oscilloscope that monitors the incoming signal and decides when it starts to draw or begin the actual capture that you see on your screen. Now depending upon the trigger conditions that you have set, the scope can trigger the signal when it crosses a certain voltage threshold or pressure threshold or whatever scaling you have set. Or if you have an advanced level set, there can be a lot more complex conditions that need to be met before the trigger actually starts to capture on your screen. So let's get right into it. We're running the Pico 6 automotive software in demo mode. And I'm going to go through a quick introduction to triggers and how they're used. So most of your trigger settings will be here at the bottom. You'll see it gives you your trigger options of none, auto, repeat, and single. And there's a few other options across the board here. So first we have to select a trigger option other than none in order to get it to be available. So if we select auto trigger, the Pico software will do a pretty decent job of acquiring a signal depending upon your time base. You saw that I grabbed the yellow diamond and manually drug it up to an area that the waveform seems to be crossing. This yellow diamond represents our trigger threshold. So at the other options down here before I get into the threshold, we're going to go across them. So it's our trigger type. This is going to be an advanced trigger option. We have simple edge, advanced edge, window type, pulse width, interval, window pulse width, level dropout, and window dropout. These are some fairly advanced trigger options. We'll get to these in another video. We also have the option of selecting which channel we'll trigger off of. If we were to have other channels on, like so, we could select which channel we wanted to trigger off of. For instance, if we were trying to determine timing, we could select our secondary ignition option and our inductive type crank sensor, which point we would select our channel C that has our secondary ignition, decrease our time base so we'll only see one ignition event on the screen, which point the auto function would do a really good job of maintaining our secondary ignition waveform on the screen, which point we could reference our theoretical top dead center to our inductive timing mark. Now, turning off the excess channels, going back to our single waveform, again decreasing the time base, you can see that with the single channel, the Pico 6 automotive software does a very good job of its auto function capturing the waveform on the screen. The other options available are how it triggers. It can trigger on a rising edge. You notice where the waveform is captured now. As the rising edge of the waveform crosses the trigger threshold, the yellow diamond, or falling edge. If we select it, you'll notice that the waveform is caught at the falling edge of the waveform as it passes the trigger threshold. The next box gives us a left and right options for selecting the trigger mark. So there are a few ways to do this. We can manually left click and hold and drag the diamond wherever we would like this. Higher than the voltage to the point where the waveform never crosses the threshold and acquires the signal or lower. We can also select up to some predetermined intervals. We can select the box and type in a very specific voltage point. All are available options in moving and manipulating the trigger threshold. The other option is the pre-trigger percentage. And it's very well described here at the bottom as the amount of data that is captured before the trigger diamond. 
So you can see that 30% of the screen is to the left of the diamond. Now 40, now 50, 60, and so on. These are your primary trigger functions that are available. Now selecting the next trigger option of repeat is going to look very similar with this particular waveform. At one milliseconds per division, looking at injector current, we can see that this waveform continually refreshes. Down here at the bottom, it lists that it's still running. And on a live vehicle, where RPMs would be a little more erratic, this waveform would be moving around a little bit. Our pulse width, the time between this point and this point, is fairly stable within the demo mode. On a real vehicle, this would be moving around quite a bit. Using a repeat trigger will help stabilize the waveform where you can watch for intermittent anomalies. The next option is single. You'll notice the waveform is still. It shows stop down here. The software is designed to stop the capture at the moment the first waveform crosses the threshold at which you've set for the trigger. This is a very good setting for acquiring relative compression or signal dropouts or increases in voltage, especially ones that are intermittent problems. These are the most basic functions of the triggers. We'll make an advanced video to show you some other trigger options available, including going into the advanced trigger options. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. And remember, get out there and get some instructor-led training. All this is made possible for us by all the industry leaders producing this training and giving us the ability to grow and learn together. And it's always a fantastic networking opportunity. So we'll see you then.